So today is a really quite interesting experiment that we did some time ago. Happened quite by chance. So what happened was that Neil, our tireless technician, had to empty some cylinders of noble gases. Particularly xenon, krypton and neon. You may think that this is great extravagance, but when you buy gas in the way that we do, you pay a rental on the cylinders. Hello, I'm now talking with helium in my voice. When the cylinder's nearly empty, you're paying much more for renting it than the value of the gas inside. So eventually you just have to get rid of the last bit of gas if you don't have an urgent experiment. So I persuaded Neil to fill some balloons with neon, krypton and xenon and to make them all the same size. And because scientists like to do a control experiment, he also blew one up with nitrogen. This all happened in a great hurry. Neil had to empty the cylinders quickly. Brady wasn't in Nottingham, so we filmed it ourselves. Not me, but one of my colleagues. But you will see, I didn't even have time to put on a tie when I appear on the film. What I wanted to do was to demonstrate two different things. The first thing I wanted to show the difference in density of the gases. The heavier gas like krypton should fall much faster than neon, which should almost float. And when Sam and Neil released all four balloons at the same time, you can see the xenon does fall quite a lot faster. I always thought if you had like, you know, a feather and a hammer and these sort of things, th mass is irrelevant and things should fall at the same speed. Of course, this is true in a vacuum, but if you have a balloon which is very large compared to its mass, air resistance is important, so then the weight does become significant. And if you watch, you can see the neon f falls much more slowly than the xenon and krypton. Of course, if you had helium, it would have gone the other way. Yeah, of course, helium should have gone up. In fact, neon is lighter than air and also should have gone up. But you've got to remember that the balloon also has a weight. So the neon was more or less neutral. And so it went down just rather slowly. Now, there was another reason I wanted the balloons filled. And this is because I really wanted to have a balloon of xenon in my office. I could show to visitors and my idea was that the gas in the balloon leaks out or so I thought by a process called diffusion and light molecules like neon diffuse much faster than heavy atoms like xenon. The reason is that light molecules travel faster so the neon is banging away at the sides of the balloon all the time. The xenon, while travelling slower, doesn't hit the side so frequently, so it shouldn't go through so fast. So I expected that the neon balloon would deflate quite quickly, but the xenon balloon would stay for a long time, and I could show it to visitors and say, wow, look, a balloon of xenon. So after the dropping experiment, the balloons were taken to my office. And you can see from the photo, they were more or less the same size. The next day I was horrified. The xenon balloon had got small. So I ran down and told Neil he hadn't filled it up properly and persuaded him to fill another one. I thought he hadn't tied the knot properly at the end of the balloon. But the next day the same thing had happened the xenon balloon had got small, and I was really puzzled. But then I discovered that my theory was wrong. In fact, there'd been a paper published exactly a 100 years ago which showed the rate at which 
gases diffuse through the fabric of rubber balloons. And they didn't use xenon because it's so expensive, but they used carbon dioxide, which has very similar properties to xenon. And it turns out that carbon dioxide diffuses out of a balloon much faster than hydrogen because it dissolves in the rubber. And the same must be true for xenon as well. I suddenly learned something. The reason that gases come out of balloons is not just diffusion, but it's the rate at which they dissolve in the rubber. How does xenon dissolve in rubber? What's going on there? Well, the rubber is, if you like, like a very viscous liquid. It's not really a crystalline solid. And so material can dissolve in the rubber. What do you mean by dissolve? Well, it is just the same as dissolving in a liquid. The atoms of xenon, or molecules, because the molecule has only one atom, goes between the chains of the rubber molecules just in the same way as it would dissolve in a liquid. So the xenon dissolves in the rubber, which is quite thin, and then it goes through the rubber and comes out the other side, rather as it would do through a thin film of liquid. Why would a big xenon atom have an easier time dissolving than, say, a neon atom, which is much smaller? I think it's because the xenon atom interacts more strongly with the rubber uh, than the neon, and therefore, energetically, it is favourable for the xenon to go into the rubber compared to the neon. So I think that this experiment demonstrates two things, perhaps three. The first thing, it demonstrates the difference between a demonstration, where you're so showing something that you know is going to happen. We knew that xenon was heavier than neon, so we knew it would fall faster. The other part, the size of the balloon, turned out to be an experiment. An experiment is where you do something when beforehand you have a hypothesis, if you like, a theory. I had the hypothesis that neon would come out faster than xenon, we did the experiment and showed that it was wrong. Xenon came out faster than neon. So it was almost you intended to do a demonstration that turned into an experiment. Precisely. And then it demonstrated the third thing, which is chemists or scientists like me can't possibly know everything. Even though it's a hundred years ago since the paper on gases in balloons had been published, I knew nothing about it until I'd actually seen the effect and then searched for papers and found that it was well known. The important thing is that one's never too young or too old to learn things. By a very high voltage, you can excite the electrons in the helium and it emits light. And then with a small spectroscope, you can look at it and see the very yellow line that was detected in the sun spectrum.